This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Hello divers. The subject of today's video is how to reach your tank valves. More specifically, how to reach your tank valves for manifolded and independent back mount doubles. One of the common issues with new technical divers is reaching their tank valves. In order to better understand how to reach your tank valves, we are going to look at the circumstances under which you need to be able to reach your tank valves and the physical location that you are at when you are trying to reach your tank valves. Once we understand those two factors, we can identify some situations in which it is not necessary to reach your tank valves. And we can also identify some techniques that can help you reach your tank valves when you must reach them. First, let's discuss reasons why you must be able to reach your tank valves. These include the pre-dive gear check, skills training, and emergencies. With the gear check, one of the very first things that you want to do is to check the status of your valves. Prior to getting into your rig, you should have already opened all the valves. But as part of the gear check, you're going to verify the status of the valves being open. So the first thing is to go to the right post, to close it slightly, and to open it to verify that that is open. Next, you'll do the manifold. You'll close it a little bit and then open it again. And then lastly, you'll do the left post, you'll close the valve slightly and open it again to verify that it's open. So this is the first time you're going to need to be able to reach your valves during the gear check. The second reason why you need to be able to reach your valves is for skill training. In skill training, you will need to be able to reach your valves for the valve drill, for the free-flowing regulator exercises, and also for the leaking manifold exercises. And the third reason why you need to be able to reach your valves is in the event of an actual emergency, either on the surface or underwater. I have been involved in one emergency, which did require me to be able to reach my valves. In that situation, the high-pressure seat on my first stage failed to seal properly and 3,000 PSI started coming out of my first stage into my second stage. In this situation, I needed to close my valve in order to preserve gas. Let's talk about the second factor involved in reaching your tank valves and this is where are you physically when you need to reach your tank valves. So the first situation would be um, on uh, dry land and that could also include uh, uh, being on the shore or uh, being on a boat tech. Okay, so in this situation uh, what you would actually be doing is you would be looking at uh, doing your gear check. You wouldn't be doing any skills unless you're practicing the skills, uh, but you'd primarily be doing the gear check and um, if you did have a gear uh, malfunction while you're on dry land, uh, it wouldn't be considered uh, a uh, actual emergency. All right, so the first physical location that you could be is on what I'll call dry land. The second location that you could be is uh, floating in the water. And so uh, there are some uh, dive teams which what they like to do is they like to jump off the boat or they actually like to go into the water. Uh, and then uh, they would uh, be conducting their gear check uh, while they're floating in the water. So that's the second one. And then uh, the last situation uh, is you would be underwater and this would be uh, totally inappropriate for you to do a gear check once you're or under the water. And so uh, under the water would be most applicable to uh, you being um, conducting some dive skills uh, and also emergencies. All right, so those are the three different physical locations that you will be uh, doing a situation where you're going to be uh, needing to reach your valves. If you're having difficulty reaching your valves, one of the things that you can consider is reaching your valves when it's easiest to do so. 
So, if during a gear check you have a choice between doing the gear check on land or doing the gear check floating in the water, you should do the gear check on land. So what's the difference between these two? When we do the gear check on land, the first thing that we do is we check the status of our valves. After we've checked the status of our valves, we check the status of our bladder. So when we do the gear check, you can actually have the bladder deflated. When the bladder is deflated, it is much easier to reach your valves because the bladder is not pushing you away from the valves. On the other hand, if we do the gear check while we're floating in the water, we are likely to have our bladder completely filled. For many people, this has a tendency of pushing the tank valves further away from them. So, if you do the gear check in the water with your bladder full and you're floating, it can be more difficult to reach your tank valves. So if you have a choice of doing the gear check on land or floating in the water, if you're having trouble reaching your valves, consider doing the gear check while you're on land. Next, let's take a look at reaching your tank valves during skills training. As previously discussed, there are three skills in which you will need to reach your tank valves. That's the valve drill, that's a free-flowing regulator, and a manifold leak. In this case, it is very unlikely that your bladder is going to be filled, so reaching your valves with your bladder filled is no longer going to be an issue. So, if you're still having problems underwater reaching your tank valves, we have to look elsewhere for a solution. One of the things that a lot of students do that prevents them from reaching their tank valves is the positioning of their arm. Some people's physiology allows them to reach the tank valves better if they have their arm toward their head. If their arm is away from their head, they may not have the same range of motion. All right, so that's one way that you can reach your tank valves a little better uh, is by putting your elbow close to your head. Another thing that you can look into that will help you reach your tank valves during skills training is the position of your harness relative to your tank valves. If it turns out that you have your plate in a position so that the tank valves are low, that would mean that you're going to actually you be using the, uh, the bottom uh, adjustment point here then what will happen is your tank uh, will be lower uh, relative to your harness. So another thing that you can try is to take your plate and move your plate down and use the upper mounting holes and that may give you enough room to be able to more easily reach your tank valves. A third thing that you could do, which is not necessarily recommended or possible in many situations, is to take the tank bands and move the tank bands down, or similarly take the tanks and move the tanks up relative to the bands, and that will also give you the possibility of another inch or two. The only difficulty with that is many uh, dive shops uh, in which you uh, might be renting tanks from will not allow you to move the position of the tank band. Another technique that you could use to help you reach your tank valves involves your crotch strap. With your crotch strap, what you can do in order to gain a few more inches to reach your tank valve is you can either disconnect your crotch strap, in this case, or what you can do is you can release your waist belt enough to allow your crotch strap to move up. If you use this technique at the same time as taking your hand and putting it on the bottom of the tank and pushing the tank up, you'll be able to gain another couple of inches to reach your tank valves. Sometimes this is enough, 
to be able to effectively reach your tank valves and do the valve drill or the free-flowing regulator valve shutdown or the manifold shutdown. All right, so what are some of the problems if you adjust your plate or if you adjust your uh, tank inside the bands? If you already have good trim in your original positioning of your plate and your tank bands, by moving your plate and the harness to a different position or by moving the tank band to a different position, you may have an effect on your trim. So, while it is very important to be able to reach your tank valves during skills training, it is also very important to make sure that you have proper trim. So, if it is necessary to either adjust the mounting position for the plate or the position of the tank bands, then you may have to adjust your trim uh, appropriately by moving weights. There's an old military saying that the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. And this can also apply to reaching your tank valves. If you take the skills training seriously and you become proficient in the valve drill, the regulator shutdown for free flowing, and also a manifold leak shutdown, then you'll be able to develop enough muscle memory so that in the event that you have an actual emergency during a dive, you will be able to respond effectively. So there you have it, a few ideas on how to reach your tank valves. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.